Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Greg. And welcome to another episode of Into the Music. music. So, Chris, what do you got for me today? Okay, today we've got The Grateful Dead, and we're going to do a song called New Speedway Boogie. Okay, um, so I do know Grateful Dead, and I know the songs that you hear on the radio a lot, but not that song. So I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, good. I think you're going to like this one. Okay, great. Okay, you ready? Let's hit it. All right, let's go. Please don't dominate the rap jack If you got nothing new to say If you please don't back up the jack This train's got to run today So initial take, uh, I like it. Uh, it. It has a real bluesy feel. Um, it's got, of course, that Grateful Dead sound. A um, little different, though, than other stuff that I know from them. Um, this seems to just be moving a bit more. Um, just has has a real good pace to it. Um, uh, and I love that blues feel. Uh, um, Garcia's guitar, you know, the little... You know, starting out with the chords and the notes right there, setting the tone, and his voice is really strong. So those are my first takes. Uh, I like the song so far. Let's go. those those chord changes you know it's very sim simple but just those couple of chord changes there and there's, I think there's another change that comes uh so and also the bass the bass is really um nothing fancy but and i don't know if it's just this recorded um this this version that i'm listening to but the bass is very prominent uh really kind of thumping in my ears My last stop here. Um, so I, I like that little slide, little guitar. Um, also, uh, I'm wondering if, because the lyrics, I don't really know what the song's about, uh, but they sound kind of like traditional like. Uh, so I'm not sure if, the, and Grateful Dead were known for doing covers of like old time songs, traditional stuff. So I'm not sure if this is something that they, that they wrote themselves or they covered again something that was written like a folk song because it's got that even though it's blues it's like a blues folk feel um it's telling some kind of story again i'm not really listening to lyrics so much really more into the sound all right let's finish it out Yes, they always will. Now, I don't 
Very nice, very nice. Uh, really, um, I mean, again, you know, it's got it's that Grateful Dead sound, uh, but it it just again compared to other stuff that I know from them, um, more of a blues sound, and uh, I really liked it. Um, a couple of lyrics that I was catching. I mean, one time he said he went up to the mountain, so that was interesting. Um, I guess you go up to the mountain. Why do you go up to the mountain to kind of, you know, learn, you know, uh, get closer to God, um, become more spiritual, uh, search for answers. So um, I'm not sure what he, you know, what that, you know, what, again, not really sure what the song's about. Um, and I think at the end, that repeat line, uh, one way or another, this darkness, I think he was saying, this darkness uh, has to end or has to give. So um, that's interesting. So we'll get into more of the lyrics in the song uh, when I talk with Chris. But really good song. Um, okay. That was a good one by Chris. So Greg, what did you think of that song? Yeah, I really like the song. Um, I love the beginning part with, with the guitar. I set the tone. I had that blues, blues folk feel. You know, it sounded like, um, you know, one of the questions I had raised during the reaction was if the song was a traditional song or if they actually wrote it, you know, it just, um, I mean, a lot of the Grateful Dead songs kind of have that. Yeah. Yeah. Like they did a, feel. Song, yeah. they did a song called Ming new mingle with blues. And it was, there's an actual first mingle with blues by somebody else. Right. So I'm, I'm wondering, maybe there's a speedway boogie to begin with. I don't know. I didn't look that one up. You know, really just, more in tune with just the feel and of the song you know the bass was pretty cool nothing really you know just it was kind of like almost like driving the song um yeah. and uh and and you know one of the things too was you know was wondering if it was early early grateful dead or if it was something a little bit later you know more like in the later 70s you know my so guess what, what was, would be your guess on that one my guess that i didn't say it in, in the reaction but my guess was like early um like you know 70 71 you're on the right oh <laughs> 1970 dude okay okay cool. i don't know what you win saying that but um <laughs> other than the satisfaction of getting it right absolutely um, cool i'm glad you liked it you had never yeah. heard that before right i mean didn't ring a bell no and like garcia's voice was just you know just um really strong yeah um and uh you know, and I like the end too, you know, where he, he repeated that one line over and over and then it kind of yeah, like, he went, he went yeah. like, yeah. you know, and it just kind of took it and took it out, you know, um, yeah. it kind of, it, it left, you know, it kind of, I don't know, a little haunting, you know, a little bit, I don't know, just kind yeah. of had that feel, yeah. you know, just took yeah. it out. That, um, actually, that fits in with the meaning of the lyrics, actually, okay. which I wouldn't have known until you looked into it. But um, you know what? I've been listening to this song for years, and you know, I knew the lyrics, but I never really thought too much about what they meant. I just took it in a right. general sense, you know, um, which I can get to in a little while. But um, you know, what really attracted me to the song? I go more for the music than the lyrics. If the lyrics are great, I appreciate it. But usually, you know, the hook, the, what attracts me is the music itself. So, like with this one. Um, uh, the tone of the guitar, I think, is fantastic. And um, I just like the feel of, you know, it kind of, it's got a good groove to it, you know? Are you no. a deadhead now? <laughs> <laughs> You're on your way, man. I always liked, 
I mean, I know some of this stuff, right, that you hear on the radio. Um, my yeah. son, one of my yeah. sons is actually getting into Grateful Dead. Okay. Uh, so he has like the greatest hits. So, okay, uh, that's a good start, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. This song, um, okay. okay. So I looked it up for the first time, like I said, after I've been listening to this song for years, right? I looked it up and, you know, they got there, they have a lyricist who is not part of the band, right? Right. The guy Robert Hunt, his name is Robert Hunter. He's had his own band and so on, but um, he never really maybe played with him once or twice. I don't know, but he's not officially part of the band. So he read the lyrics and, you know, the other members would write the songs. And um, so this guy, Robert Hunter, had read an article about what happened at Altamont. This surprised me. Um, and for you, those of you who don't know, uh, Altamont was... It was a free concert done in California um, at Altamont Speedway. Hey, maybe that's why it's new Speedway Boogie. Who knew? Okay, so um, for you, those of you don't know, who don't know, um, the whole like um, peace and love movement in the 60s, in the late 60s, um, you know, it really took full gear with Woodstock. Woodstock was like the the um, the icon of the of the beginning of that, or it's emblematic of the beginning, and um, at the same time, Altamont says it's over. So so get this. Um, let's see. It's only four months between when Woodstock occurred and when Altamont occurred. So Woodstock was all peace and love and stuff, and then Altamont. Again, for those of you who don't know, a man got stabbed to death. Um, by a member of the Hell's Angels um, while the Rolling yeah. Stones were playing, while they were doing their set. And so it, it, it put a pall over the whole, the whole peace and love movement. And it just, you know, st totally threw shade on it. It was just this violent thing that happened. And uh, a lot of people saw that as the death of the movement. And so Robert Hunter wrote an article, read an article uh, by a music critic about what happened at Altamont. And it looks like, so it looks like this is his response to reading that article. And I'm assuming from the words that, uh, you know, the words in general are kind of like, hey, you know, uh, we're still going on with the movement. Get out of our way. You know, don't dominate the rap, Jack, which is the first line. Okay. Um, which I'm guessing would be the critic, what he was saying, because the critics probably went wild saying this is the death of the movement and all, you know. Yeah. Um, they probably sensationalized it. Um, and he's saying, no, we're going forward with it, man. This is, we know what's going on. I, I spent a little time on the mountain. I spent a little time on the hill. You know, he knows things, you know, don't, don't, don't BS, BS us that it's over for your story, you know? Um, so I think that's what really pushed it. But, um, you know, the Altamont was a big, a big deal. And it, it kind of like, a, it's a, it's a cultural um, demarcation point for the end of that movement even though the movement still went on yeah. but you know in popular culture you know so there's a lot more to this song than i thought yeah which yeah. really i could go deeper into it but <laughs> we well, it, is, it is interesting i mean the title of the song really would not does not indicate that there's real deep meaning right you know, um it's like like, woo, you know, it's expecting a fast paced song and something like with Speedway and racing. Oh, yeah, and, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. and it, you just got this kind of um, bluesy kind of mood piece, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah. so, you know, now as you explain the lyrics, you know, that definitely makes sense. Yeah. Um, so actually, Gimme Shelter is one of my favorite movies. I have, I own that m movie. I yeah. remember watching that yeah. movie. Which when is I was a um, teenager on Channel Thirteen. They would right. run it occasionally. People, which yeah. is the movie about what happened at Altamont. Right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know the Rolling Stones. You know, giving shelter, focused in on the Rolling Stones right. performance right. there, and you know they showed the footage of of the Hell's Angel attacking the guy and stabbing, yeah. and and that was like it's basically like the centerpiece. And then yeah. you know Jagger. You know, not to be a spoiler, but you know Jagger then sort of looks at the film, is looking at it and talking about it, and that's pretty powerful too. Cause Jag is like looking yeah. and seeing and watching this. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and in fact, right. Yeah. I guess you've seen the film too. Like where, you know, Keith Richards, is like, you know, <laughs> that guy right there, you know, and just yelling and screaming, you know, I, I we're, we're not playing until you stop it. And it was just, 
I, I watched it um, years and years ago. Yeah. I'd like to watch this is spurring me on to watch and watch it again. Yeah. Um, and um, I saw it was part of a, there was a documentary about the Rolling Stones. I don't know if you saw it um, uh, called Crossfire Hurricane. And it takes you through the history of them. And uh, they, they went to the Altamont thing quite a bit. And I was actually, I don't even recall. I was, must have been a, really a kid, you know, truly a little kid when I watched um, Give Me Shelter. So yeah. I don't remember seeing the footage of the guy being killed. But when I watched Crossfire Hurricane, you know, it was there right in front of me. And um, oh, it's scary to watch. It's scary to watch real, real violence, you know. Yeah. And um, so I understand how, in a way, how people reacted to it. It's kind of like a reminder that, you know, um, yeah, you can have this peace and love thing, but, you know, there, there's some there's that dark, dark side of human nature when things can go yeah. haywire. You but, know? you know, and I guess I'll dig into a little bit more because I'm curious, um, you know, I, and I, I get um, the Grateful Dead's sort of take on, on it and their pushback. And they were the there. They were supposed to play. Yeah. But know, they didn't because of what happened. Because yeah. the guy, a guy from Jefferson Airplane, uh, someone threw something at him or hit him or something. And the Grateful Dead said, that's it, we're not Yeah. We're not going on. Yeah. And um, I just wonder, I, I need to really read that. I would like to get a hold of the article and read it, you know, that piece by the critic. Um, because, you know, my understanding too, like some things that I know, um, you know, around that time, like, you know, just what kind of sticks out at me as you were talking about all this, you know, like George Harrison, you know, and as he you know, in different interviews talked about, you know, going to San Francisco and yeah, wasn't you know, too he was buying awesome. into the whole love thing and all like that. And yeah. he was expecting this kind of experience right. of love and brotherhood and connected connectivity and the whole thing. And, and he came away like something different, you know, because they all wanted a piece of him. They wanted a piece of him. And he, yeah. he felt like threatened. He felt like he was, you know, not, you know, um, he felt like, you know, uh, physically, you know, he needed to get out of there. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and so, you know, I'm just wondering if like when the, when that guy wrote that, that piece that he wasn't just like, you know, just singling out the ultimate, I wonder if there was some other things, you know, other chain of events or things that, you know, that were leading up until that, you know, cause that does right. kind of make sense. Like around that time, right. 69. Probably and, because, because and, you, yeah. you noticed, um, the, the lyrics, there, there's nothing specific to that event in the lyrics. Yeah. You know, it's a general thing, you know, it's almost an abstraction of, of it, you know, or, yeah. you know, he's talking about more of a mic macrocosm of, of this happening that, and yeah, of course, I, I would think if you're writing a song about it, you would, you would, you would want to have that extended meaning there, you know? Yeah. I'm going to listen to that a few more times and I, I really want to get into it. Um, you know, what's now remarkable about it, is because like I said, I mean, I really felt it from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. There was, there was something powerful about it. You know, it had me from like just simple, but it just, yeah. you know, those first guitar chords and those notes, you know, it mm -hmm. just set the, t you know, pace. There was something, you know, deep, you know, within those, you know, within those notes and the chords mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you felt there was some, um, you know, something in Garcia's voice, you know, um, mm -hmm. there was some, there was something in his voice, I guess, you know, now as I kind of listen to you and, uh, you know, there was a pointed message, you know, you just felt there was something in the lyrics, you know, um, it was, it was, it was hard to really listen to every word. So, you know, as you're kind of getting yeah. into the music, sure. you know, and right. Um, and that's the tricky thing, right? About the reactions, you know, as you and I are going to be going through, you know, um, yeah, we'll figuring out the words and like, what is the, you know, not easy, you know, trying to figure out right. what the song is the first time. Listen, um, right. but that's, it's really interesting now because you, you could just tell that, you know, so now I'm thinking they were definitely, you know, annoyed, irked. They, there was this message, message that, that they wanted to send back out and to do that through this song, you know, um, that's creativity, right? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Turn a negative thing into a positive, even in a little way. Yeah. 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 Felt strongly enough to, you know, to get it together. I mean, when you think about like Crosby, Stills and Nash and Ohio, you know, and seeing like, you know, what yeah. happened there and, you know, yeah. 
um, on the campus. Yeah, there were a lot of, um, you don't really get, you don't really get too many political statements and songs, although, you know, even though I don't really follow current stuff, um, I imagine there's got to be some political songs out there currently, you know, but I'm not aware of any. Me too. Then, it could be up. happening. Yeah, I just, I just don't, you know. Yeah. Well, that's a whole other thing, too, is we go through these reactions and we talk how music has changed, you know, um, you know, um, and uh, you're just not getting that, you know, on the news, a lot of social justice and and um, and all. But yeah, but through the I, music, rather... I'm not I'm not I'm not, you know, I'm not hearing that. And it'll be interesting no. if that if that kind of if that sort of revives yeah. and you start hearing some songs, you know, um, yep. singing about current day stuff. Then again, though, I'm not really listening to the radio these days. I'm not. I'm not listening to like, oh, here's the here's the college alternative radio station, right? You know, like I used to do. Um, perhaps you know we hear it on there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I well, got to explore it. Great song, really. Yeah, cool. Glad you liked it. Yeah. One of my favorites. I'll keep listening to it. And it doesn't I... seem to age, so that's a good thing. No, it's funny you just said that because. You know, a song, you know, some of the songs, right, from the 60s, early 70s. Yeah, you, you can, you can that pinpoint feel, right that, that. You know, that kind of instrument, that kind of sound, production. Um, no, not this song, you know, and maybe it might be because of that blues yeah. feel, you know. Um, it's kind of simple, you know, they weren't putting a lot yeah. of production. Right, right. They I was going to say, hey, that's uh, 70s. Or, it's not yeah. like there's this one effect that, oh, yeah, we heard that in every 80s song, like some yeah. synthesizer effect or something like that. It could have been recorded, yeah. you know, this year, you know, yeah. for, all, for all I know. So, yeah, um, absolutely. Cool. All right, Chris. All right. Good choice. Good. All right. All right. See you all.